Thank you everyone for joining me. My name is Tia Santana and I am hereby joined with artist Ashley Brady. Ashley is an artist who is exploring experimental practices in artistic mediums, um, specifically the works of art that are um, exhibited in this exhibition are acrylic paintings. Um, I would just like to introduce Ashley, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Tell me a little bit about your background and a little bit about yourself. Okay, so where should I start? <laughs> um, right now, I'm a senior at Dartmouth College up in New Hampshire. That's where I'm located right now. Um, I'm majoring in art history and minoring in studio art and geography. And so basically what I'm most interested in is going into an architecture field. But um, I sort of came onto that through just combining two of my greatest passions, which are art and social justice specifically for black women. So I'm not totally sure what I wanna do specifically with that yet in architecture. I just know that's what I wanna do. Um, so I've been an artist most of my life um, in like a very loose term. Like I've just always liked to express myself creatively through different mediums. Um, and just recently I've started to play around with just sort of, I guess, very subtly confronting my past, being a black girl in a majority white area um, through my artwork and sort of exploring what that has, what that experience was like through my paintings, um, which I think people will be able to see <laughs> with the pieces that I've picked for this gallery. Um, so yeah, that's sort of, that's just a little bit about me and what I like to do and where I hope to take my artistic style further. Um, I'm still playing around with sort of different sorts of styles. I haven't really found my style yet. I only know that I just wanna keep on expressing myself in the way that I am through whatever medium comes to me. So I'm open to everything. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> How did these paintings come about and like the representation of this natural movement? Yeah, so at first these paintings came about <laughs> just because they were part of my final project for my painting class last year. Um, but then I sort of stuck around with acrylic just because oil is scary to me, but acrylic also just, I think the mixing, it's a, the way you mix colors and the way you have to layer stuff and blend stuff in a very specific way with acrylic sort of, I think works with my subject matter, um, which is always going to be black women <laughs> and black hair. Um, and I just noticed with acrylic, you can start with a green base and then go to sort of a yellow base and then go to red and then keep layering until you get like a brown color. And I think that just really, I just love that because Black women are coming in all kinds of different shades. We have all kinds of different undertones. Like we've got yellow, green, purple, blue. And it's just fun playing around with acrylic colors and seeing how you can layer those all up until you eventually get like an actual black woman skin tone. And it's sort of the same with hair just because our hair is so textured in so many different ways. Um, and with acrylic, it's sort of, it can be, or at least the way I use it, <laughs> it can be rough around the edges a little bit. Um, where you have just some paint that just kind of lifts up a little. It might be a little um, runny here, but like really thick other places if you let it dry sometimes. And it just makes really nice textures. And that's what I like. I like it when my paintings have a little texture to them. Thank you so much. Amazing. And your paintings are uh, superb. I mean, I really like um, the use of <laughs> of the way that you're using textures um, and the way that you're using color within the skin tones as well. So thank mm -hmm. you. Um, and I brought you here today to share a personal narrative as we've been on this journey of, you know, this work is so personal to, um, to each artist. I feel that each artist that have, um, that are ex exhibiting has some sort of a personal narrative, whether it's shared, uh, whether it, it was shared with someone else or whether it's lived personally or whether they um, uh, they, they viewed someone else's um, uh, uh, narrative. Uh, so if you would like to share a personal narrative with us, that would be great. 
Yeah, mine might be a little sad, <laughs> but you know, the path to self love is never ending. I'm realizing, but I guess just a little anecdote. So I went to Tower Hill School, which is a mostly white, fairly, fairly wealthy uh, private school in Wilmington. Went there like most of my life, started in second grade. And so I was along with there, I think we were one of, we were, yeah, I think we were the only two black girls in the school until, or in our grade until um, high school. And then we got some more black women, but I just know, I remember growing up and just, <laughs> so you know how the story is usually like, oh, my mom made me get a relaxer. No, I'm the one who begged my mom for a relaxer. Cause I was like, everyone has this straight hair. And I had a lot of hair on my head. So I was like, I bet if it's straight, it'll look just like theirs. It'll be perfect. So, you know, I got a relaxer. I was straightening it every day. I remember just always, I would take a shower with my hair out and it just, I'd just marvel at it being straight and stuff. Um, so yeah, that was sort of, that was my relationship with my hair for a good part of my life. Then I got to high school, still was getting a relaxer. And then I noticed my ends were just crazy. <laughs> like I, my hair was just starting to fall out. I'm like, it's fine. We can fix it. Just keep straightening it. It's fine. Um, and then eventually I had to do the big chop. And that is when I realized that a black woman's relationship with her hair is so much different than a white girl's because I had like white friends who, you know, they'd get their hair cut, they'd get it layered, be like, it's just hair. But when I had to get that big chop, I remember just being in that salon holding back tears like, this is it. It's all over. <laughs> this is done. Um, so that's sort of when I started to really I get coming because I always knew black hair was different, but I think around that time is when I realized, okay, there's the really is like a thing. Like my whole identity is around my hair. Um, and then, you know, I had some other black friends at that time that I'd made, they'd come into Tower Hill from other schools. And I had one friend who also straightened her hair every day. Um, and then we both were just like, we have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't really get there until after we left that environment and went off to college. So, you know, I love my protective styles now. <laughs> I love them. Um, you know, during the summer, I'll take my hair out and let it just be free and it's a little Afro and everything. And my friends are the same. Um, and my other friend has sort of a, a little bit looser curls. Um, but, you know, she still felt like she had to straighten them out so really <laughs> no matter what hair type it was like if it's if you're black and it's curly it's gotta go and that's sort of just like I even wrote my common app for a college about just frying my hair in the mornings before going to school um just being late to get to school because I was like I can be late I just cannot show up with my hair not bone straight um so that definitely is influencing like that was me conforming <laughs> to the area around me. Now I'm doing everything I can to not conform to that. Um, and you can, I think you can definitely see that in my art because I mostly do um, black women with either protective styles or their natural hair out. Cause I'm like, let's just, we need to celebrate this more because you know, however you wanna have your hair, it's fine. But when there's already so much imagery of us with bone straight hair, let's make sure we know it's acceptable to have, you know, our natural hair or our protective styles. Um, so yes, that's, that's my narrative. It and I, so thank you so much for sharing your narrative with me. And I know that that can be, you know, it, it can be a, a place of healing, but it can also be a place of relive pain um, <laughs> um, in that. But as you continue to tell your story, you know, you're also speaking to those who will come after you and those who are still in the process of healing. Um, and, you know, there are some who are still um, conforming. Um, and there are these conformities that we as um, women of color put on ourselves. And then there are these conformities that institutions put on us. And so there's, you know, you, you, you sound like, you know, there was a lot of there's a lot of weight there specifically by your institution at a young age at an adolescent age where you're exploring your own identity and trying to come into your own self and figure out you know who you are without those 
with, with, without should have having those added stressors of, 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 you know, like conforming to something that your body and your hair type just naturally doesn't do and Mm -hmm. having, you know, within, did, did you have people in your school that, uh, that ever like, uh, encouraged you to wear your natural hair were there instances in your school where there were people that you know if you if you did wear your hair straight like you weren't looked at the same like what was did you ever have treatment of you know or did you ever see a treatment of someone in their natural hair versus someone who had their straight hair like how did that play into your thought process of how you needed to conform yourself yeah it wasn't ever like a blatant thing but Let's see, because I didn't always have my hair straight. Like when I was in lower school, you know, like I had my little, my mom would do like my braids, just like my natural hair braided up. And I I don't think I ever really wore it out though. Um, Then middle school, I was straightening it every day, put it in the ponytail and I was like, yep, this is what it is. Um, And I do, I like, I got comments. I mean, they weren't like malicious comments or anything, but it was just like, oh, I like your hair like this. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Um... Even with, I think the first time I got a protective style of braids was in eighth grade. And um, people were like, oh, the long hair is so good. And like protective styles, you know, are good, but it's just that very subtle thing of like, what if it's not your hair, then it's just, it's better. Um, so yeah. And then I remember one of my friends had, like my hair was an average length, like to my shoulders, but one of my other friends had like very long hair um she was she also straightened it every day but it was very very long very full very healthy and everyone was like oh it's so luscious like it's so beautiful I love it um and I'm sure those got to her too and made her feel like okay well then I have to keep straightening because this is when people think that I'm like my most beautiful um so it's just like very subtle comments it's never anything blatant like sometimes you feel crazy being like there's something wrong with that comment because like it's like on the surface level it's it's really nothing that bad but you sort of internalize it and then are like okay well then that means I have to wear my hair like this all the time so so it was just stuff like that um and then going even deeper like I would do my hair or like my mom would do my hair for special occasions and special occasions would always get the straight hair or like you know the the bumped ends kind of look so then that was probably, it's just like very small things. Like no one means to harm you. Like no one thinks it's going to do anything, but you sort of internalize, okay, so this hair means formal and natural hair means just like casual every day, like not put together. Um, even like looking at like black girls at my school for prom, even some of the girls who like did have the wear their natural hair every day they would straighten it for prom or like do something. It was never like a protective style for prom. It was always straight hair. So it's sort of like, hmm, it's the theme here. <laughs> like there's something going on, um, which is why also I think the crown act is so important because I think it's a step forward to be like, kinky hair is professional. Love the naps. The naps are the, like, they're not unprofessional. They're, there's nothing wrong with naps. They're perfect. Um, even the fact that nappy hair has such a negative connotation to it. Like I remember hearing just mm, her hair is nappy. My hair is nappy. That's a, like, that's not a bad word. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just very subtle ways of language and just people's preferences that sort of drive that whole thing, <laughs> I guess. I, I, I really thank you for, um, for your comment and, um, and your perspective and it's so important I really love how you were speaking to again like that double-edged sword and then the subtleties you know that double-edged sword of having these in these influences on one in in which way one in which a way someone wears their hair whether it's natural or straightened but to talk about how uh the representation of uh, something that's formal, like, you know, you, you brought out the hard iron or, you know, it was straight and you get the curling irons and that, that was like, okay, this is, this is a special occasion. Like you said, you know, to put that elitism on it. And then also to talk about, you know, how, you know, you are subtly receiving information, especially as a child, um, 
from all sources you know you're receiving information from magazine from the magazine colors covers of like you know like i remember jet magazine and essence magazine and yeah. you know all of all, all of these magazines that we're receiving our information from or if you're receiving your information from um uh, modern, so something more contemporary like Instagram and uh, Twitter or like, you know, whatever social media um, platform you're on. Um, it is great to see, like you said, you know, you go back, you, you're in, you're just finishing up your degree, um, your bachelor's degree, correct? Mm -hmm. So you go back and it's not such a long period of time before, but you can go back now, you can see more, um, more younger, um, uh, people embracing, you know, their natural hair and then saying, hey, this is who I am. And this is where this, um, you know, it, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not, um, um, I'm unapologetic when it comes to me wearing my natural hair, whether I'm going to an interview or whether I'm going to a wedding, if I'm going to a business meeting, or if I'm just, you know, that this is just me, I'm just as beautiful today as I am tomorrow when it's time to go to, you know, to the Senate meeting or wherever you need to go. Like this is just, just an idea, just the concept of that acceptance is very powerful. And I, I really appreciate you speaking to the subject matter because, you know, the institution, school is an institution um, and, you know, and these um, perceptions, they, um, they are very um, informing at such a young age. Um, so I think that that is really important um, that you brought that up. So I wanna thank you for that. And um, are there any final thoughts, Ashley? Um, well, I guess just like I said, and you reiterated, it's just, it's the very subtle things. So I think with my art, I'm not trying to do anything that big or that crazy. I think I just want to be one of those subtle sort of things that's put out there and people can look at it and be like, yeah, that's normal. That's something that we like, ha like that's just how the world is. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's my main that would be my main goal for my artwork. So just a very subtle thing to put out there for young black girls to look at. Really anyone can look at it, but I feel like young black girls will be able to look at it and be like, oh, okay, so it is normal. So like I can see myself in art and I can see my hair as art and that's fine and it's professional and it's good. That's, that's what I want. Great. Thank you so much, Ashley, for being here with us today. And we are so excited to see your work in the exhibition. And until we meet again, until next time, I want to say uh, thank you from the Delaware Contemporary and you be well. Thank you. <laughs>